Honestly, right now on the earth, we need a demonstration of the Spirit's power. We need the whole body of Christ equipped in everything that God has. We have impossible situations. We have impo the gospel has to be preached with power. We are very prideful if we think we can do it in our own effort. What Jesus Christ himself set forth, that this would be a gospel, his good news of what Christ has done, demonstrating the power of God that aligns with his heart, which is to see all men restored back to a good, good father. And so Randy does this so beautifully. When I was a teenager, honestly, I was passionate about the Lord. Uh, since I was five years old, been walking in intimacy with Him. We went to this Mennonite charismatic church in, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And as a teenager, I remember we having these little small prayer groups um, some of us who were really hungry, and we would just pray for each other. We didn't even know what we were doing, to be honest. We just had experienced the presence of God, and we knew that there was more. And then we had heard about something happening in Toronto. There was, uh, you know, Toronto was only about six hours from where we lived, and oh my goodness, we were hearing stories about these crazy things happening. And as a young 16, 17-year-old teenager, you're trying to, you haven't seen it in your own life, and you haven't seen it in your church, but for some reason, I never doubted that it was real. I, and the way that he was moving sounded like God. It sounded like how he would break out of our boxes. And so when I heard about that this team for, from Toronto was coming to Lancaster and they were gonna host this special service, me and some of my other hungry friends, we just decided to go check it out. Let's see what this is all about. And at that time, I'd been really pressing in for my prayer language and you know, reading little pamphlets that my father had, uh, studying the Bible over the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I go to this meeting and we see things we have never experienced before, which was the raw power of God. People were shaking under the power of God. People were laughing under the power of God. And you know, I, I'm trying to remember back to, cause it's so normal now to who I am. But before that, we had just mostly known about God in His quietness and in His stillness and then through the word of God. And I began to just shake violently under the power of God. Me and my other friend, Lisa, got radically touched that night and it marked me, it marked me that I knew there was more, but I didn't know how to get there. And so my friends and I, we decided to go back to our high school. We start this little prayer group, this little Bible study that ended up exploding on our campus. And we saw tons of our friends, you know, recommit their lives to Christ or get saved for the first time. And we were having crazy radical encounters. And then my friends and I heard that Randy Clark, the man who, who was helping to lead Toronto was gonna to be visiting Philadelphia. And since at that age, we weren't gonna to go to Canada. So we're like, let's go see Randy Clark. So me and a few other friends, we got in a car and we drove about an hour to visit him in Philadelphia. And I literally don't remember anything that Randy preached on that night. I remember there was thousands of people in this huge church and the presence and glory of God. All I remember from that night is that he was there the king was there and that I woke up in the lobby. I'm not sure how I got in the lobby. I'm not sure how long I was in this encounter with the Lord, but I, I'll never forget the weight of God that we would experience in those early 90s. And it changed the trajectory of my whole life. Uh, at that point, I had been, you know, really wanting to pursue business or go into dentistry or something, you know, significant. I was raised on the East Coast or, you know, you just know you're born for significance. And, and, um, and so about, about a couple Sunday nights later, I'm at um, our church service. It's like a revival service. And all of a sudden, I hear the Lord speak to me and He invites me to lay down my dream for college. He invites me to lay down what I thought was my future. And he invites me to say yes to full-time ministry. And it was actually a weeping decision because I had thought as a little teenager, you know, that I had my whole life planned and, and this is what it was and this is what I was meant to do. And I felt really confident in that but, because I was pretty smart in school and pretty confident person and a leader. And he was asking me to give all that up and to, to basically take a low road now I don't see it that way, but 
I had never even considered full-time ministry. I had never considered preaching and teaching and anything. I had just thought business. Uh, I looked up online um, the school of ministry down at Brownsville, and it came up online, to be honest. I, that was back in AOL, so you had to wait for the dial-up. And as I'm waiting, I'm listening to the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, you know. And if you're from that era, you would know these songs. And, and I, the presence of God just arrested me to say yes to, to His call, uh, to train and equip His people to love Him and to know Him, which is honestly all I've ever done with my life is to help people love Him and know Him. And so fast forward, I, you know, I've been in full-time ministry for over 22 years now. And two years ago, I am sitting with my daughter in her bedroom, and we are doing her homework together. And she said, I've been asked to study a revivalist of our time, because she goes to a Christian school. And I said, well, who did you pick? She said, I picked Randy Clark. And so we begin to just study Randy's life, and oh my goodness, like what the impact that Randy has had on Bethel movement, but the the larger church, the global church, is so significant. And just the way he's pursued the supernatural, the way he has personally sought theology along with the power of God, the, the brilliance of his mind, yet the compassion of his heart. And, and as we're studying it, there's a, there's a key component of his ministry that I'd, I'd never fully known, and I've known Randy for several years now, is that he has this anointing that is, calls people into full-time ministry. And it hits me in that moment that back in Philadelphia, that encounter I had because of Randy Clark's ministry actually was the catalyst to being called into full-time ministry. I had never even thought of it until I had that encounter that night. And I'm sitting there with my daughter and I said, oh my gosh, Addie. And I tell her the whole story of my encounter. I tell her my whole story of how Randy Clark has personally impacted me. And she's like, wait a second. So I'm here today because of Randy Clark. I said, yes, honey, you are. I would have never gone to Bible college and met your father. We would have never come together. I have Randy Clark as a huge catalyst for what he has, has paved the way in revival, and for what you and your, your brother get to experience, that your father and I have said yes to revival, that there's no plan B. And that's Randy Clark. For him, it's revival and there's no plan B. And it's cool because now I get to experience the legacy that Randy's life has forged a way that me and my family and my children get to now come together in this beautiful call of God and seeing the legacy passed on. And so I shared that, that story with one of our staff. They said, oh, we, we think Randy should pray for your daughter. So last time he was visiting, he prayed over my daughter and he gave her so many significant words for her life. And um, I am so grateful that his life hasn't just impacted mine, but his life is impacting my daughters and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren because it's legacy and it's kingdom. And I just can't say enough about who Randy Clark is to the body of Christ, but his personal impact has been so deep and so eternal. I am forever grateful for the life of Randy Clark.